you now have a rotation? Oh, no. No, we'll, we'll talk about that today. Uh, and just what's what's the plan for today? What's what's going on with you guys today? Um, so we're having a normal normal workout. Um, a couple lives. Nest, Nestor's going live. Um, and but yeah, just kind of a normal workout today. Up front on your left, Brian. Aaron, you guys got to see the Dodgers here in June. What did you take away from those three games? Um. Yeah, I talk every now and then about fun series in the course of the regular season, you know, whether it's a division rival, it's a big series that you kind of have that juice and they're good games, you know, going to London, the Field of Dreams stuff. We've been to L.A. a couple times since I've been here in the regular seasons. Those always were really cool series and, and the same rang true here in the Bronx. You know, obviously they beat us two out of three, felt like three really competitive games. I think Juan was out in all of them, wasn't he? Um, but, you know, obviously, no, you're up against a great opponent. And, uh, but, but just looking back at that series, like it was, uh, it was just cool regular season, summertime in the Bronx, Dodgers coming in, haven't been here in a long time and, uh, cool weekend. Fourth row on your far right, Peter. Hi, Aaron. Um, back here. Um, what's it been like for you the last five years being able to give the ball to Garrett Cole to start postseason series and how can he set the tone for you in this one yeah I mean he's he's been everything we could have hoped when we brought him here you know he's he's been you know one of this era's aces um obviously he's had a great career on a hall of fame track um you know beat us in in 19 with Houston and then uh to be able to bring him here you know, he obviously walked in here with a lot of expectations and a lot of weight on him um, to be the ace of our staff, and, and he's been every bit of that. Um, but it's also not been without its moments, without, like, some, you know, he he's had those moments of truth and, and, and tough moments that he's been so good at answering uh, throughout his time with us. Um, and he's proven himself to be a, a big game pitcher, and um, we're we're obviously you know blessed to be able to give him the ball to to get this thing started. Standing out your far right, Joel. Aaron, in that June series, do you allow your mind to wander at all and say, "I wonder if we're going to see those guys again"? Maybe a little. I mean, I I think ever since I've been here, there's always been that there's always that Yankee Dodger thing, um, and and certainly every year, you know they and us have had one of those teams that you can envision being playing each other in October. So maybe an, on some level it's always there a little bit, but when you're in the season, um, you know, you're, you're, you're so series to series and who you're playing and getting ready for that. But I think there's that always that underlying thing with, with the Dodgers and the Yankees. Yeah. Yeah. That you know, it's not easy to get to this point. And what's it been? Forty, forty-three years uh, since '81 were these two teams. And you think of the success of these two franchises. That it's now been forty-three years is is remarkable, and and showed you that. You know, I I know well and good how hard it is to get to this point. Um, so we're excited about it. Uh, we'll be ready for it, and and just looking forward to hopefully a great series. The fourth row in the right center aisle. Hey, Aaron, kind of on that, you know, it seems like you guys have been circling each other for, for almost the entire five years. Is there any added, not that you need any more juice for the World Series, but is there added juice that finally, you know, everyone kind of agrees the best two teams in baseball are going head-to-head? -head? I'm sure there'll be that, you know, in, in the world, like, the I'm sure the amount of people watching and paying attention probably you're going to draw on on even more people that will watch this World Series than would otherwise watch the World Series. So you're you're talking about a greater pool of people that will be interested in this. So we understand that, but for us, it's you know like we feel like we're going on a business trip tomorrow. You know, it's whether we're playing the Dodgers or whoever we are, to be able to get to the World Series and have a chance to play for a world championship, um, you know, that's what you that's what you work so hard 
to to have that opportunity. So I don't think it really changes much for us. Um, you know, obviously, you understand there'll be more eyeballs on it, but but honestly, it doesn't really change much for us. Uh, if we could pass the microphone to Disha. Thank you. Aaron, is Soto the most confident player at the plate that not only you've managed, but in baseball, especially in those high-pressure situations? Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I think I think we have a number of those kind of players that are pretty confident of, in what they can do. He's one of the greats that I've you know ever managed, but I'm managing a few of those guys. So um, <clears throat> one of the things that's certainly been enjoyable for me is 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 getting to know Juan and kind of the person and who he is, um, and to see his at bat quality um, all year. I go back to the first spring training game, like where. You know, there are a lot of eyes on that and a lot of, and it's like, you got, you became very aware very early that, you know, I've described him as that his at bats are like wars, battles, you know, like very, it's not too often that you see the crowd feed off of ball one, strike one with Juan because he creates this theatrical battle of him and the pitcher, you know as much as anyone I've ever seen. I will go to Ron and then Bruce. Every time that Juan comes through and has a big hit, does part of you think, oh, that's only going to raise the cost to try to keep him here? <laughs> Not really. I, I, I mean, I'm more just like I love him up there in those spots because I know um, just how – how tough as the bats are and, and and it seems like the the bigger the at bat the bigger the moment he does have a knack for seizing that moment and uh we've seen it all year and culminating with with an at bat for the ages in the championship series so hopefully there's more of those in front of us here this coming week and uh looking forward to going to battle with them got a bruce right next to you judge otani both likely MVPs, both home run champions in their leagues. What do you think of the matchup within the matchup? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I've, I've gotten to see Aaron now for seven years. Um, got to know him well. Um, just the reverence I have for the person. Um, excited that, that he's going to get to go be on this stage. Um, and, and of course I know playing against Shohei, you know, what a amazing talent he is. And, and obviously, you know, going to the Dodgers this year and having the kind of season he's put out there, um, you know, it's, I think it's great for the sport, um, great for baseball and, uh, you know, looking forward to, to the battle of it all. Good. Nate in the second row on your left. Aaron, you, you mentioned the other day that you've been in communication with Joe Torre a little bit. I'm wondering if there's any uh, bit of advice or, or, or wisdom that you've gleaned from him, either in those recent conversations or even just from being around him over the years that you'll take with you into uh, the World Series. Yeah, I mean, you know, me coming over here at the trade deadline as a player in 2003, you know, he was just such a stabilizing factor for me. Um such a steady presence um in that seat so you know i just <clears throat> my admiration for him right away and i knew him a little bit before that um as a kid uh when he was a broadcaster with the angels when my dad was with the angels so i i knew him a little bit then but then getting to play for him and just to see how he handled you know being the skipper of this team and um just you know help help put me at ease a little bit you know, in, in what can be a whirlwind, a stressful environment when you, you're you gone at the trade deadline and boom, into a new team and a new situation. So he just, to see him handle all that was was impressive and hopefully something I've taken with me. Um, you know, he's he's been more in a Major League Baseball role for most of my time here. But, you know, this year, you know, we got him to spring training. And it was so meaningful to so many of us, especially me, um, just to have 
<clears throat> have him, you know, he, I first asked him and he said, yeah, I'll be there for, and he came up, you know, for several days with us. Um, and the first, you know, he wasn't going to be in uniform. I asked him if, you know, if you want to get in uniform, it'd be great. And he's like, eh, I'm not sure about that. And after the first day in Tampa, when he was there, I brought it to him again. I'm like, what do you think about getting in uni? He said, all right. So then he got in uni. Then I got him to make a pitching change. But him being there with us for a few days was so impactful, I think, for our players and our coaches and certainly me. But I think it meant a lot to him, too. Like, I think him being there, I think he was looking forward to it. But then when he got here, I think he really enjoyed it. And uh, um, and then he's he's popped in every now and then. You know, he'll pop into Robbie's office, and he'll just be sitting there and – um, usually before a game, he'll just pop in with me and we'll connect real quick and, you know, put his hands on me a little bit and just say, you know, go get them. Um, text me right after we, we beat Cleveland, just, you know, his pride and, in in me and what we're doing and everything. So it means a lot. It really does. I mean, obviously he's a giant in, in the sport and hall of famer and a, an amazing player in his day too. Um, and just, you know, has a tremendous amount of respect in our sport, and that certainly rings true for me in the respect I have for him. So for him to be around a little bit and for us to be able to communicate a little really does mean a lot to me. Third row on your far right, Jorge. Aaron, uh, before the postseason started and right around when it did start, there was some talk out of Los Angeles that Shohei could pitch um, eventually. Are you guys preparing for that possibility? Do you expect him to see him on the mound at some point in the series? Um, I haven't given much thought to that. Um, so no, but you know, if, if that's the case, we'll be, we'll be ready for it, for everything. You know, we know what everyone they have throws and what they feature and things like that. So we'll be prepared for anything. A little beyond Jorge, we'll go to Greg. Do you expect to go 14 and 12 again, or, or would you carry 13 pitchers? Just how much those guys worked in the CS? Yeah. Um, could be 13. We'll see. Up, and we'll finish up with two in the front row, Stephanie and Andy. You're the manager, but presumably you learn from your players. Um, what have you learned from being around Giancarlo? Um, I've talked about this a little bit before, but, you know, Giancarlo, he, he, he carries such respect in that room. You know, he's not a... He's not a loud, vocal leader typically, but when he does say things, um, myself included, but definitely the team, like, you listen. Because he, when he opens his mouth, he, he says a lot of smart things and a lot of thoughtful things. He's not just speaking to speak, ever. So um, one of the things that I've taken with me that I can – and I've talked to you guys a little bit about this before, but I, I can remember where it was. I can remember the impact it had on the room and on me. And, and it's something that I've made a part of my spring training speech to these guys, or when I talk to them at any point during the year, when we lost in 21 in the wild card game to the Red Sox, he got up and, and spoke in the room afterwards. And, it was one of those where G speaks, you listen. And he he talked about <clears throat> the noise, you know, that, that, you know, that exists when you, you know, in this game and when you're in the playoffs and certainly when you're in New York and playing for the Yankees, there's a lot of noise out there that can become a distraction for you. And it's everything from great, you want to hear how great you are? You want to hear how terrible you are and everything in between? It's all out there for you to absorb and at your fingertips if you want it. And and really, and what he's so good at is understanding that what, great or bad, it's noise and it's it can get in your way. And one of the things I've seen and appreciated about G since he came here in 18 is watching him evolve and deal with that stuff. And 
he's as good as I've ever seen at like you you can't affect him. You want to scream and yell at him, you want to praise him, whatever. It's all noise to him. He knows where to take his mind and where to take his focus and how to do it, and he is disciplined to it. And, you know, I think it obviously serves him very well when we get into these situations where he's been such a good playoff performer. Um, he's great at the noise is meaningless to him. You know, it's it's about the guys in that room and what, what his job is when he walks between the lines. We'll finish up with Andy. Uh, you were talking before about Soto being a battle on every pitch. I was wondering if you were asked to think about like how many times this season he's looked bad on a swing or made a bad swing decision or chased, uh, what you might think. It, it's, I, obviously it happens, but it seems like it happens so much less than with your average player. Yeah, I mean, look, he's such a great hitter and and you know so disciplined to his routine and what he does to prepare. Um And his his ability to adjust and process within the at bat is really impressive, and and I think the at bat against Cleveland, you know, there were some funky swings in there where he's behind the count, just spoiling and just kind of like a great player, just processing the information that's coming his way each pitch and how to handle it and how to deal with it and how to apply it and. Uh, I mean that's a that's just a classic Juan Soto at bat where you can kind of feel and sense and see him learning from every pitch, and eventually getting one that he could do right. a lot of damage with. So it's not like he never makes a mistake, but he immediately adjusts. Yeah, yeah. yeah.